Valentine. And uh, how many St. Valentines there actually were still remains a mystery. And confusion surrounds his true identity. But the St. Valentine of Rome, St. Valentinius, seems to be differentiated from the others. Uh, according to the ancient legends, uh, this is around 270 AD, uh, Valentine slash Valentinius of Rome, a venerable uh, priest, is summoned before the emperor. Now, for Christians, a summons b before the emperor was not exactly good news. Uh, we're not exactly sure which Roman emperor it was who summoned Valentine before him. We're not really sure. Now, most historians believe it was Claudius II, uh, who rules from 260 to 270 AD. Uh, Claudius II is also known as Gothicus, uh, due to his many victories against the Germanic tribes, like uh, the Alemanni and the Goths. Uh, Claudius II, Gothicus, dies from an outbreak of severe plague in Rome in 270 AD. Now, some other scholars, historians, believe it was the Emperor Aurelian. Now, Aurelian rules from 270 to 275 AD. Aurelian persecutes the Christians with a passion. Uh, he also reunites and restores the empire uh, after 15 years of rebellion and decay. Uh, and he's a very pious pagan. Uh, he dedicates many new temples to Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun. Uh, these are very extravagant temples, uh, covered in jewels, gold, and silver. They're encrusted with precious gems and metals. Uh, these are very special places of worship that are built by Aurelian. Uh, Aurelian hates the Christians and considers them a subversive threat to the unity of the Roman Empire. Now, according to the legend, the Roman Saint Valentine, Valentinius, has been performing weddings for soldiers deep in the catacombs. Uh, the Roman legionnaires at one point in time were forbidden to marry or to have a family. Now, the idea being that soldiers would fight better without the thoughts of loved ones entering their minds and breaking their concentration during, well, crucial points in time when they're fighting. Valentine, Valentinius, wears a purple amethyst ring uh, with the image of Cupid engraved on it. Uh, the legionnaires, the soldiers, recognize the ring and ask him to perform marriages for them. Uh, later, uh, later on in time, amethyst becomes the birthstone uh, uh, for February and is said to attract love. Now, Valentine slash Valentinius also cuts out hearts from cloth and parchment and gives them to the soldiers in order to remind them of their vows of love and their vows to God. Now, many Christians, uh, many soldiers, by the late 3rd century uh, AD, have become secret Christians. Uh, the legionnaires, the soldiers, link Jesus Christ to the ancient Persian god Mithras. Uh, Mithras was one of the main, most important deities uh, for the legionnaires. Uh, and they equate it with Jesus Christ. Now, the emperor, either Claudius II or Aurelian, remember, we're not exactly sure which ruler it was, asks Valentine, why do you not win our friendship by abandoning your superstitions about this Christ? Uh, Valentine responds, well, if you knew the grace of God, you would turn your mind away from your idols and adore Christ, the one true God. The emperor then asks Valentine, what have you to say about our gods? Well, Valentine responds, they were modeled after sinful and wretched human beings. They are full of every vice. Believe in Christ and your soul will be saved. The empire will prosper and you will be granted victory over your enemies. Now the emperor likes the sound of this uh, and says, men of Rome, uh, hear how wisely and rightly this man speaks. But not everyone there including a powerful and influential prefect named Asturias, agrees. Uh, the emperor is being led astray, says Asturias. And if we listen to this Valentine, 
We must give up all that we have ever believed, the traditions of our ancestors. Uh, and many people in the throne room believe that the prefect, Asturias, speaks the truth, and their arguments sway the emperor. Uh, the emperor finally says very well, uh, take this Valentine into custody, and I will consider what to do with him. Now, Valentine, Valentinius, is then held at the prefect Asturias' own home, uh, and he prays to God upon arrival. Lord Christ, the true light of the world, uh, enlighten this house, and let all here know that you are the true God. Now, the prefect, upon hearing the words uh, of Valentine, becomes intrigued, uh, and asks Valentine, Valentinius, you say that your Christ is a being of light. My daughter Julia is blind. If he can give light to her, I will do whatever you want of me. And Valentine says, take me to her. Uh, the Roman priest then prays over the young woman and places his hands on her eyes. A miracle occurs. Mother, says Julia, I can see. Uh, and uh, the entire household is rapidly converted to Christianity. Uh, Valentine, Valentinius, baptizes 44 people, uh, the entire family, plus servants and slaves. Uh, the prefect, who has been humbled, asks Valentine, what should I do now? Well, Valentine responds, break all the idols around your house and fast for three days. Well, the prefect soon obeys. Uh, and also frees all the Christians under his authority. However, word soon comes from the emperor, and the prefect sadly tells Valentine, you have been condemned to die. Forgive me. I am sorry. Valentine tells the prefect Asturias, do not grieve for me. Uh, I do not fear a martyr's death. Uh, Valentinius, Valentine, is then brought under guard back to the emperor, uh, who attempts to get Valentine to convert uh, to Roman paganism, uh, to abandon his Christianity. Uh, but Valentine will not sacrifice to the old gods in order to save his life. Now, on the night before his execution, Valentine slash Valentinius writes a letter addressed to the daughter of the, new Christ, uh, 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 of the now Christian prefect, Julia. The woman, uh, who, the young girl who, who, who is healed, who is no longer blind. Now, he signs this letter from your Valentine. This is essentially the first Valentine letter. Julia, uh, upon Valentinius's Valentine's execution, uh, then plants a pink-blossomed almond tree near his grave. Uh, this is, of course, a symbol of eternal love. Uh, so the next morning, Valentine, Valentinius, is brutally beaten with clubs, uh, but the beating fails to kill him, so he is then beheaded. Uh, Valentine, Valentinius, is hastily buried on the Via Flaminia uh, in a cemetery near the Milvian Bridge, the date of his death, of course, being February 14th. Now, the name Valentinius, Valentine, does not appear does not occur in the earliest Roman list of Christian martyrs, uh, which is written around 350 A.D. Uh, but the name Valentine Valentinius does appear in the compilation of saints, uh, Martili uh, Martiliologium uh, Hieronymium, uh, which is written around, oh, 500 A.D. And another book from the era, the Passio Mata et Marte, uh, publishes the story of his death. Uh, and embellishes the legend uh, with tortures that were given to other saints. Now, the Venerable Bede, the great uh, Anglo-Saxon scholar and priest uh, from the 7th century AD, uh, AD uh, the most knowledgeable man of his era, of his age, links St. Valentine to Claudius II. Uh, Bede has Valentine persecuted as a Christian and interrogated by the, em uh, by the emperor. Uh, the legend of Valentine is picked up fast in later martyrologies uh, from the early medieval period. By the 13th century, uh, a very influential text called the Golden Legend retells the story of Valentine, Valentinius of Rome. Uh, the Golden Legend 
uh, was one of the most read books of the high Middle Ages and gives a date of his death as February 14th. Uh, by 1400, uh, there's another text, the Nuremberg Chronicles, uh, which features a woodcut of St. Valentine, Valentinius of Rome. Uh, the text links him, relates him to lovers. Uh, in the Nuremberg book, uh, Valentine performs forbidden marriages uh, for the Roman soldiers and falls in love himself with the daughter of the prefect, Julia, uh, whom he has healed of blindness, uh, writing a farewell letter to her while awaiting execution. So the legend that I've just recited is, in fact, an amalgamation of all these different martyrologies. Now, the question is, how did this connection to love and lovers come about? Well, the answer uh, is the great English author and poet of the 14th century, Geoffrey Chaucer, uh, who's around from about 1340 to 1400. Chaucer, uh, who was from a middle-class family,